Hello everyone. Do you remember what all facts we have studied in the starting of the chapter? Yes, almost coming across the fact that the acid produced in our stomach can even dissolve the razor blade. I wonder what happens in our digestive system. Now once the food enters into the alimentary canal, it has to pass five organs and two other organs which assist it by secreting the digestive juices. So, it takes approximately 6 to 8 hours for the complete digestion process. So, let's see the digestion process in a detailed way. So, the food digestion starts from the mouth itself. That is the reason you are said to chew your food properly. Now, the food grinding process starts by mixing it with the saliva. Now, the saliva here performs two functions. First is softening of food so that it can easily pass the food pipe. And second, saliva also has an enzyme called as salivary amylase. Now, what does this salivary amylase do? This salivary amylase digests the complex starch into the simple sugar. So, here you can see that the digestion process has started in the mouth itself. Now, the food has become a little soft and simpler form. So, it passes into the esophagus or what we call as food pipe. The food pipe has a thin lining of muscles which contract and relax rhythmically. Now this type of movement is called as peristaltic movement which happens in the gut also. So this peristaltic movement helps the esophagus to push the food to the stomach. Now stomach is a large organ which expands as soon as the food enters into it. The muscular walls help in thorough mixing of the food with the digestive juices. Stomach releases two enzymes which breaks down the complex food materials into the simpler one. The stomach releases hydrochloric acid to make the medium acidic. Now this acidic medium is important for the working of the pepsin enzyme. This pepsin breaks down the proteins into the peptides. Now what are these peptides? These peptides are the shorter chains of the amino acids. Now, we have seen that which two enzymes work in the stomach. We have seen that the HCL is also released in the stomach. So, to prevent the linings or the inner muscular layers of the stomach, it has a mucus covering to prevent the damage which can be caused by HCL. Sometimes you must have heard that the people are suffering from acidity. Now this acidity is because of the excess release of hydrochloric acid and we have already studied in our earlier chapter acid bases and salts that how we can overcome the problem of acidity. Now the food from the stomach is pushed into the small intestine with the help of the sphincter muscles. These sphincter muscles releases food in small amount to the small intestine. From the stomach, now the food has been placed into the small intestine. This is the longest part of the alimentary canal which is fitted in a compact way due to extensive coiling. Small intestine is about 6 meter longer than us. But the length of the small intestine varies according to the organisms and their food which they take. Like when we talk of herbivores, the grass eaters, have longer small intestines because they have to digest cellulose. But the omnivores or the carnivores have shorter small intestine. Now it is the small intestine only where the complete digestion of carbohydrates, fats and protein takes place. It gets the secretion from liver and pancreas. Now the food which we have received from the stomach into the small intestine is acidic. And for the further digestion, it has to be made alkaline. So it is made alkaline by the secretion of bile juice from liver. These bile juice breaks down the fat also. The huge or the large globules of fat is emulsified by the bile so that the enzyme action can be enhanced. Now the pancreas also releases two more enzymes, trypsin, for the digestion of protein and lipase for the digestion of carbohydrates. 
It has also intestinal juices which helps in the breaking down of complex particles. Now when you reach to the final stage of digestion, the complex proteins have been broken down into the amino acids, the carbohydrates have been broken down into the simpler sugars and the fats have been broken down into fatty acids and glycerols. So the digestion in the small intestine is complete. Now the food is digested so it has to be absorbed. This absorption is done by the inner walls of the small intestine. Now these inner walls have small finger like projections called as villi which increases the area of absorption for the food. Now these villi are richly supplied with blood vessels which absorb the digested food and transfer it to each and every cell where it can utilize it for providing energy or building up new tissues or repairing the old ones. Now the remaining undigested food is sent to the large intestine. Now the large intestine has also villi which absorbs the water from the food. The large intestine is 1.5 meters long. Now the food which remains undigested and unused is thrown out of the body through anus. This exit of waste material from anus is possible due to the anal sphincter muscles. So we have seen the complete digestion process of a human being. So now let's quickly have a recap on what all enzymes we have used. So first comes the salivary amylase which was present in the mouth and helps in breaking down of starch into the simpler sugars. The second one was the hydrochloric acid which was present in the stomach and which helped the food to be made into acidic medium. The third one was the pepsin which was also present in the stomach and broke down the proteins into the peptides. We have also seen the mucus which was a thin lining of the stomach which protected the stomach from the HCL. From there we came to the bile juice which was secreted by the liver and which made the food acidic to alkaline or, and also broke down the big fat globules into the smaller one. Then, came to, then we came to the pancreatic enzymes which were trypsin and lipase and they broke down or digested the proteins and the fats. At last we came to the intestinal juices which broke down the carbohydrates into the simpler sugars, proteins into the amino acids and fat into fatty acids and glycerol. So we have seen the digestion process in a whole. So we will be seeing the next life processes in the next video.